Hello, everybody. Thanks for being here. Um, I want to just update you on a medical condition I have because it will become evident during the press conference. Uh, last week, I began having symptoms of double vision. I spent the weekend uh, seeking medical counsel uh, and spoke to m many doctors, uh, and, and I, uh, they ruled out very serious uh, causes of it, but needless to say, I have not been uh, fixed of it. So I will struggle in the immediate future to see, because I see most cases two of you right now, uh, and at some point that will become too, too much for me, and I may have to put on a pair of glasses uh, or uh, shade some of the light, but I normally would not do this briefing if this was going to be a one-day event, but until they find the cause of what they know what's wrong with me, but they don't know what caused it, and until the doctors find the cause, this is just going to be what it is for me. So just like anyone who has a visual impairment, that's what I have now until, uh, until I don't. And so we need to move on. We're in the middle of a pandemic still. Uh, but if I'm squinting, it's because I see two, and it's easier if I squint to see one. Uh, and if I need to put on uh, glasses, I have glasses that have a prism on the lens, which helps me see one, but then I cannot see very well. So there is no perfect solution to this, uh, but the good news is, is they rolled out what could have been some very serious causes over the weekend. Um, moving on to the pandemic, uh, we had uh, two neighbors that we lost over the last 24 hours, 84-year-old male in a hospital, uh, one resident of nursing homes, Certainly uh, want to think about them and their families moving forward, uh, along with everybody else. I hear from a lot of families where people that maybe didn't die directly of COVID, but certainly circumstances from COVID that led to, uh, to their death. And certainly uh, we want to keep all, everybody uh, in our thoughts and prayers as an Onondaga County family. Uh, Seven-day average continues to drop 1.8%, really remarkable. Uh, congratulations to the community at large for responding after the holiday surges and spikes. Uh, this is really tremendous. Uh, overall, we now have 30,122 positive cases since March 16th. That's up 70 uh, from uh, yesterday. Uh, act, so 70 new cases. Again, good range. Uh, we're in Tuesday. Uh, so it looks like we're staying under the 100 trend uh, so far this week. Active cases now at 1308. Uh, that's down 36% since last Tuesday. Uh, very good. We have more recoveries essentially each day than we do active cases. Uh, four cases from senior facilities. Uh, this is important. Senior facilities have been a consistent pipeline to hospitalizations and to the ICU room. Uh, out of the four, two are residents. Uh, so uh, again, percentage-wise, we like to see that percentage be a low one. Uh, that's where it is right now. Hospitalizations are down uh, to 110. That's down nine since yesterday. Uh, 26 in the ICU. Uh, it's down one. 11% uh, of our hospitalizations are from skilled or nursing uh, facility residents right now. Uh, looking at the vaccine, uh, we have now administered 17,585 first doses so far. 6,340 second doses. Remember, if you get a first dose, there is a designated second dose uh, for you. Uh, and so I had that question today. Uh, so uh, people do get their second doses. That's the CDC policy. It's the state policy. Um, and so uh, today, Dr. Gupta's team, uh, very busy upstairs, uh, over 2,200 second doses today. We had a Moderna lab that hit four weeks today for second doses and a Pfizer lab that hit uh, three uh, weeks uh, for second doses on the same day. So a uh, very busy day. Um, the, on the second dose, a reminder, uh, you will be emailed uh, your date and appointment time of your second dose. Look for COVID vaccinations. If you didn't provide an email, you will get a call to remind you. And uh, importantly, if you received a Moderna shot the first time around, uh, you should receive a Moderna shot the second time around. Uh, you can't swap vaccine. Um, on list, if you're on on list, reminder to check your email. Uh, 
uh, especially uh, as we move forward. Uh, vac new vaccine week, I, uh, we received 1,200 doses uh, of Moderna this week. A vaccine week is Wednesday to Wednesday. So if you're on on list, please start checking your email. Uh, again, our partners uh, at Kinney's as well will pull from on list uh, for our seniors who are waiting there. These are our seniors who had real technology challenges uh, to, to get on and compete for the normal process. Um, th this week, Kinney Drugs is going to pull 100 people from on list uh, at their stores uh, and certainly uh, will dedicate uh, slots as well. Um, Pop-up clinics, uh, right now we don't believe we have any this week, uh, but we will certainly, uh, next week we potentially could. Uh, our second dose for our first pop-up clinic, uh, People's AME uh, Zion Church, will be next Monday, February 15th at the church. The start time of the clinic will be 10 uh, in the morning rather than an afternoon start time. Uh, certainly um, look for a, an email from COVID vaccinations for your appointment time. Uh, and if you didn't supply an email, again, we're gonna reach out to you and call you. So that was our first pop-up clinic that the health department did uh, in concert with Pastor Jaime uh, at uh, People's AME Zion Church. Um, the On Center, uh, the clinic is scheduled for uh, February 15th, has been moved to Tuesday, February 16th. That will be uh, second shots. Uh, appointments originally scheduled for the 15th are now the same time on the 16th. Look for an email from COVID vaccinations uh, for the change. Uh, vaccine registration for this week. Uh, Again, 1,200 doses allocated. Uh, there, it looks like next week, we'll, we'll get into uh, some of the conversation on immunocompromised. It looks like we'll be getting a specific allocation for immunocompromised doses next week. Uh, but uh, we'll split up our clinics this week, Thursday and Friday at the On Center for new doses. The reason we're doing that is because we have busy second day doses on both those days as well. Uh, so. Uh, anyone currently eligible through 1A and 1B can register on our website tomorrow at 10 a.m. This will be for Thursday's clinic. Uh, next week, immunocompromised will be eligible. Uh, again, it looks like we're going to be getting redirected doses from hospitals from throughout the state. Uh, we don't know what that total is yet. Uh, immunocompromised can be 65 and over as well. We'll roll out our strategy on how the how we're getting to the immunocompromised uh, residents uh, when we know how many doses. So if we're going to get a substantial amount of doses, uh, we'll probably do some things a little bit differently. Um, but Dr. Gupta and I will uh, figure that out when we uh, have the number. We're supposed to get that number later this week. Um, and so certainly, what, like everything, immunocompromised the categories are very broad, and uh, the number of people that are now going to become eligible are going to be a lot. Uh, and so we want to hear from doctors and work with doctors on who are your most at-risk patients. Um, and certainly Dr. Gupta is having those conversations now. We'll have a full-blown strategy, maybe even to talk about on Thursday. Uh, but. From a documentation standpoint, we'll finalize that. But certainly, uh, in, in our conversations, uh, the the state documentation process that they've talked about, uh, we're comfortable with so far with attestations, uh, doctor's note, prescriptions. Um, these are things that, again, we'll we'll work through with more details. We are happy our immunocompromised will be eligible next week. Uh, if you look at who has been uh, victims of this process with this virus. Um, it, it's been our seniors, it's been uh, people who have pre-existing conditions almost every time. So uh, this is good, uh, we're happy about that. Uh, symptomatic testing, uh, we're again, Cayuga, ongov.net slash Cayuga Medical, Monday through Friday, nine to two, uh, at the uh, FSHAD in the regional market. Uh, weekend symptomatic testing uh, in Essentia Health, 1050 West Genesee Street, 8 to 12. Uh, our rapid testing, uh, we now have, again, demand has dropped. Part of the 
reason demand drops for our uh, our rapid testing and our asymptomatic testing program is because just the cases are dropping. Um, but again, we're uh, looking at six days a week at the on center. Uh, again, if we're getting low demand during the week, we might even limit that um, because it doesn't make sense to uh, pay four or six people to work a site if there's nobody scheduling appointments. Um, but again, COVID19.ongov.net. Uh, asymptomatic community sites. Uh, we highly encourage people in the community to continue to participate. Uh, today, the Northeast Community Center in Shove Park. Wednesday, uh, Fayetteville Village Hall and Clay Senior Center, as uh, well as Skinny Atlas School District offices. Thursday uh, will be East Syracuse Village Hall, Onondaga Town Hall. Friday will be the Lafayette Community Center. Uh, again, go to ongov.net to register uh, for appointments there. We appreciate that. Uh, case investigations, as a reminder, uh, we're not as busy as we once were, but the technology allows us to streamline and do things uh, better. Uh, if you're getting a text message from 833-634-1564, that is us uh, looking to talk to you about contact tracing. Uh, saying that, happy to take questions. Uh, looking at some of the school districts downstate, particularly in New York City, uh, they're looking at bringing a portion of their middle school population mm -hmm. back for five days a week in-person learning. Um, do you think that expanding hybrid models to have students in the classroom more days a week is possible here locally? Yeah, I, we encourage it. I think uh, certain districts will uh, tell you that there are certain regulations that need to change for that to happen. Um, we're, we're getting some clarification from New York State related to some of those regulations. If it's local control, then we sit down with Dr. Gupta, talk about the pros and the cons. Recently, we modified our quarantine protocols. Uh, we've encouraged people, and we encourage this throughout the whole process, but uh, in the beginning of going back to school, we encouraged assigned seating. And from a practical standpoint, um, some of the high schools said it's not practical. Um, then you go through COVID, you realize quarantines are disruptive. Now with assigned seating, what Dr. Gupta is comfortable with is uh, essentially six feet around the person. If you have assigned seating, that's all that gets quarantined. So it's least disruptive. Uh, it modifies things, uh, probably keeps teachers out of quarantines more. Um, we're willing to look at other things. One of the big things is desks six feet apart to three feet apart. Um, it, some school districts have suggested if you go three feet apart, then they can go five days a week. Um, we're looking at it. And we, we believe especially with uh, the participation from teachers and school district officials in the vaccination program um, that the adults who've uh, really borne the brunt of this pandemic uh, are vaccinated uh, with using the data we know about schools. We have so much data now. Um, we can do this and, and do it smart. And uh, again, it's, it's about finding balance uh, if we know that the virus isn't transmitting in the school buildings, if we know the protocols have worked well, uh, we know our kids are hurting, right? We know that they're having challenges. It's been a tough year for all of them. It's been a tough year for the adults as well and the parents. Why aren't we doing it? And we know they're not learning as well remotely. And that's not a, a mock on any uh, any educator, my wife's a remote teacher. Um, so uh, it, it's just, it is what that is. So the faster we can get kids back to in-person learning every day, uh, the better. And we've heard from, uh, from some officials, uh, like the NYSET president, I spoke to him this morning, he was saying that testing really needs to be the metric in terms of how safe it is to have more kids mm -hmm. back in school more often. Uh, now that we're out of these zones, uh, how much testing is still happening at local school districts at the moment? Hundreds a day. So if that's the metric, we passed that a long time ago. So are we, are we still hitting yellow zone requirements or like in and around yeah. there? Yeah, we're still offering the same orange and yellow zone testing uh, to the districts, uh, and most of the districts are still taking us up on that. So we're still testing weekly. So when I it, usually I give like a report at the end of the day uh, on social media about uh, community testing. Out of that every day is schools that are being tested uh, based off yellow or orange zone protocols. Uh, even districts that weren't in yellow and orange zones were getting tested as well. So uh, when you look at the, a, remember, this is asymptomatic, testing people who are asymptomatic in buildings. 
the sick kids or sick adults are not allowed in the buildings with symptoms. They have to go get a PCR test to be confirmed, to be allowed back into the school building, right? So these are kids that are showing no signs of being sick, yet we're still testing them uh, and but by the thousands. Uh, and the positivity rate is 0 0.2 uh, percent, usually on average. Uh, many days we've had zero cases. Thank you for this briefing, despite your vision problems. Um, I see two of you, Andrew. What do you think of that? <laughs> no comment, Andrew. No comment. <laughs> it's tough. No, this is a, it's, this is a challenge. I, I'm, I, uh, hopefully I'm not in this position for a while. This is a challenge. I know that people with underlying health conditions have waited very impatiently um, for, for this opening up of the vaccine to them. I'm wondering first what information you can share with them about how they might be able to get a vaccine in Onondaga County, but also what challenge that huge expansion of eligibility does for the county's vaccine operation. So first, first uh, let's answer the second part of your question first is, there's always been this eligibility is one thing. Your ability to get an appointment is completely different. And we were um, making a slow, steady progress on all 1B, 1A. Um, and now there's a lot more residents coming in. So basically the state's saying they're gonna redirect what were being used, in, the vaccine that was being used in hospitals uh, now, we haven't been using vaccine in our region and hospitals in weeks. So that means, hypothetically, we would be getting new vaccine that hasn't been in our community in weeks back in our community. So here's, here's the challenge, Andrew. I don't know how many we're going to get. If we get 200 doses for immunocompromised, that's 200 people that get a sense of getting their life back. But... How many people are we talking about? 25,000, 30,000, 40,000 are now eligible? I don't even know the number. Um, so this is going to be a grind. So if you're immunocompromised and you're eligible next Tuesday, our clinics probably won't be till Thursday or Friday, um, that doesn't mean you're going to get an appointment soon. And I'm, I, I apologize in advance for that, um, but that's the reality we're in. Until we see a huge influx of new supply, we're not going to uh, be able to uh, get through these lists fast. Uh, we still have thousands and thousands of seniors that are going to be waiting and competing now with immunocompromised or two most vulnerable populations. And that's the reason I haven't turned on the restaurant worker faucet yet. Um, if you're a senior and you work at a restaurant, sure. If you're immunocompromised and you work at a restaurant, sure. But I'm not going to create more competition for our most vulnerable uh, populations until we give them a chance to get through the process yet. Will you open it up to them on, what, the 15th, I think it is? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, th we're n that week. So we're not going to do a clinic on the 15th. We get, I think that's a Tuesday, right? Um, is it a Tuesday or is it a Wednesday? Valentine's Day is a Sunday, so I believe it's Monday. Monday. Yeah, we don't even have vaccine yet. So we get the vaccine on Tuesday. Uh, we, the earliest you could do a clinic is Wednesday, probably unlikely. We'll probably be doing clinics Thursday and Friday. Uh, again, we're going to look at the immunocompromised population uh, very differently. Uh, we, we may work with primary care doctors and networks uh, if we can assure that uh, they can help us get to their uh, clients quickly. Um, it's about speed. If they can't assure they're going to do it Thursday or Friday, then that changes our mind. Um, but we're going to, uh, if we get a lot of vaccine, if we get a thousand doses from immunocompromised, we'll probably do a couple different strategies. If we get a couple hundred, um, we'll probably have one strategy and we just got to finalize it. Is 25,000 the possible number? If you, I, I don't know. I mean, you, you have a broad range of uh, people that qualify under those circumstances. So uh, I don't know the number. And again, that's what part of this will be a testation, right? Uh, not everybody can get a doctor's note. Uh, in time, so you're going to be attesting to this. So obviously, we're good people here in Onondaga County. We're not going to attest to something that isn't true. Um, so uh, this creates a log jam um, related to eligibility compared to supply. Uh, at the same time, I can't criticize the decision because uh, these people have uh, really bore the brunt of the pandemic with our seniors.
In re uh, regards to underlying conditions, I know that the state said they're leaving it up to local health departments to decide which type of proof they'll choose to accept. So which uh, proof will Onondaga County accept as far as someone verifying that they do have an underlying condition? Yeah, right now, and again, we'll come out with more details, but uh, Dr. Gupta can scream at me if I'm wrong. Uh, certainly a doctor's note. Certainly uh, there's going to be an attestation uh, probably that will be allowed. Uh, and then uh, certainly a, uh, pre prescriptions uh, could be another form, um, whether or not uh, a uh, Medicare ID card uh, around that uh, would be allowed. I'll talk to Dr. Gupta and we'll talk about that on Thursday. Um, but we're comfortable with what the state has talked about to date. And then one person that we know was told by uh, a doctor at a local hospital system here actually that they couldn't get a doctor's note documenting his underlying condition until the county released its protocols. Uh, this person has the right to their medical records, so I'm just curious what they were talking about here. No clue. I mean, I don't know why if, if I asked my doctor for a note saying I have a condition that the doctor knows uh, is documented, they should give it to him. I have no clue why would they would deny that. So the county hasn't told any no. physicians to wait until you guys give further guidance. Why would why would we, why would they not give a doctor's note? They're, basically, you're saying if I have diabetes, doctor, can you please write on a piece of paper confirming I have diabetes? Mm -hmm. You either do or you don't have diabetes. So um, certainly, if if a doctor is under the impression that they can't give a note, now could we be talking to doctors about how we might roll this out? Sure, and will may they we ask them to play a different role? Sure. Um, you know, everything about the vaccine right now is about speed. Uh, and so uh, th that doesn't make sense to me how, how that could have happened. And just last thing with the, the proof here, you know, obviously you, you gave a, a bunch of options for people as far as doctor's note prescriptions. Um, some of these conditions are, are serious and private. And so will there be any sort of medical privacy for these people, you know, when they have to show their medical records in order to get a vaccine? Uh, we'll, we'll let Dr. Gupta talk about that on Thursday, but certainly we, these are, uh, when they're coming here, you're, you're, you're dealing with health department officials uh, who have the same HIPAA requirements that others do. So um, Dr. Gupta will go over that though on Thursday. Thank you, County Executive. I have a question. We spoke with a woman today who um, said that she was able to schedule her appointments with pre-existing conditions over mm -hmm. at Walgreens. And they gave her an appointment right away um, and told her that she didn't have to have proof. So I'm curious, I don't know if this has been stated before, if places change like Walgreens, uh, Kinney's, CVS, if they're operating under different standards than what the county's implementing. No, no, they just probably just scheduled her. Um, or uh, again, if you're a pharmacy, uh, and I'm assuming she was over 65 because that's the only way they could do that. Um, if you're a pharmacy, you, probably have access to the records um, to, to kind of prove the one prescription piece of that maybe. But the pharmacies are only supposed to be vaccinating over 65. So she probably qualified as a senior as well um, because they, uh, they haven't been given the green light to do immunocompromised. That's what local governments are gonna do. Uh, you mentioned that obviously this is a great news for thousands of people who have these conditions. Um, but is this putting a strain on the county? And if so, what kind of strain is it putting on the county? Yeah, I know what this does is, and again, the, I won't say it puts a strain on us. We're ready to vaccinate as many people as they give doses to us, right? Give me 50,000 doses and tell me I have a week to do it and we'll figure out a way to do it. Um, what it does though, is it creates an anxiety level um, right now, we have registration day, 1,000 slots, 600 slots, whatever the slots are that go to the general public um, after we micro-target the groups that we were told we need to. Um, the Those thousands of people that don't get a vaccine, hundreds are calling upset, emailing upset. Um, and so this will be exacerbated. Uh, so. Does it have an impact on our staff? Sure, it does. Our health department, my office, they're going to get phone calls getting screamed at for um, uh, at least a day. Uh, but that's what happens on vaccine day. So um, that's going to happen again. Um, there's an anxiety with this. This is a very emotional process. You can, uh, someone can be very upset 
because it took them a while to get the vaccine, but they're crying the day they walk out when they get it in tears of joy. Um, and so we just need to recognize that because you're eligible does not mean you'll get a vaccine this week, next week, the following week, or, or a month from now. Uh, it all depends on the supply that's coming into the community. Um, I don't think eligibility is going to loosen up until we get more supply again to drive through these, these already eligible groups. Um, that Johnson & Johnson shot comes on, uh, then you, you'll see thousands of new doses a week coming in, and then maybe through a month, six weeks, you can get through large numbers of these eligibility uh, groups. But again, I don't, I agree with the decision to allow the, this group. It will slow things down for other groups, um, but these individuals uh, have, uh, can get very sick. Many of them have gotten very sick. Uh, and when it's about speed, taking care of your vulnerable so that I don't have to announce deaths um, in ICU uh, rooms, this is the tool and these are the people that should be focused on. How uh, soon before it was announced to the public were you guys aware of this eligibility? Is it long enough? We've been talking about it for the last few weeks. Um, and so, again, we have discussions that we, you know, we, we advocate, we talk about things. Um, about when things might happen. I think every step of the way the states allowed a little bit of flexibility of eligibility, there's been a little bump in supply. Now the bump in supply is coming from the hospital 1As essentially being arguably at capacity with participation. So that supply is gonna now get redirected here. Um, that's good, we can start giving shots. Um, it won't be enough supply to get through this population. So. Is there something you want to? Is there something you want to say to people in this eligibility group to mentally prepare them for what they're up against trying to get an appointment? Yeah. So I, I just think from a percentage standpoint, I don't know the total number, Andrew, but uh, a couple weeks ago when we had uh, huge, huge uh, hits on our website, you had a 1.4 percent chance that day of probably getting a shot uh, or an appointment for a shot. Um, you, you're probably going to have a better percentage in this group because we have dedicated slots for this group. Um, but we're not talking about a 5%, 10% chance of getting an appointment in week one, right? So I think we just need to be prepared for that. Uh, and no, we're going to get to you. We're very happy. We pushed to get you here. Um, and is again, as soon as they give us supply, no matter how much it is, we will get it out and we'll get shots in arms. The allocation uh, stays separate. Yeah, so immunocompromised, we'll get we'll get a probably our 1200 is uh, one section. Immunocompromised will be a separate section. Uh, we'll probably dedicate some more of the 1200 to the immunocompromised as well, depending on how, how much that is. But again, I don't know if that's 200 shots, a thousand shots, 2,000 shots. We haven't been told yet. So will that be two separate sign-ups then? Uh... Depends on what we do. We'll have a, register, a general si sign-up, um, but again, we could work with primary care doctors uh, as, as in this process. Uh, we're, we're ironing out those details based off of what we think we're going to get. Uh, uh... High school sports kicking up again. Uh, we've gotten, personally, as media, some different indications from different <laughs> high schools as to what we're allowed to do with our attendance. I know you responded to our news director yeah. a little bit on Twitter. <laughs> we have uh, Cicero North Syracuse saying that we need to show a negative test, whereas Liverpool just needs to hear that we're coming in advance. Yeah. Uh, what is the county's rule? What did Nico do attendance? to Cicero North Syracuse? Sorry? What did Nico do to Cicero North Syracuse? I did he do you. something? I, I, look at it. Some of this stuff is silly. Uh, I appreciate cautiousness. Uh, the reality is there's a public health expert in Onondaga County. She's in the room. Uh, if we thought that that was necessary to send a news, uh, uh, a sports media guy in there who's 100 feet away from the athletes to do that, we would have put those guidance on there. I think some of this is just people overthinking things. Um, and so uh, there's no reason, temperature checks, symptom checks, attestations, yes. Uh, requiring a test for uh, someone with a camera to get in to get some footage, uh, overkill.
especially, I mean, Nico. I mean, I don't know if Nico's tough on CNS. Does he pick a fight with their head coach before? I don't know. I ask him for me. I'll report back. As far as um, testing, I, I believe you mentioned that at least asymptomatic testing is down. Can you just kind of talk about overall trends with people going to get COVID tested right now in the community, and are they down? Generally? Yeah, they are. So symptomatic testing uh, is down. That's uh, a trend of less people being sick with symptoms. Um, so uh, that's positive. Again, we're at 70 cases today. Uh, and so that's positive. Uh, asymptomatic testing, even though um, you're supposed to be asymptomatic to get the test, I know people cheated and they would have symptoms and they would go. Uh, we know that happened. Um, and that is, is down as well. Part of that is the anxiety in the communities down a little bit. Um, we need to continue to be, you know, very vigilant. This is a brutal virus, and people are still dying from it. Our numbers are getting better. Our positive rate's great. Uh, I know we're not having irresponsible gatherings now, or else our cases would be up um, more. Uh, but it's still winter, and this thing's still around, and it can jump back up if we get too lax. Uh, so we still encourage, especially the community testing. We're going into communities. We're making it easy for you to go get a test, get a test. Um, it's better to know uh, that you have it and, and do your isolation than for you to have it and not know it and give it to grandma or grandpa. What is the impact, do you think, if less people are getting tested in the community? I mean, do you think part of this is because people might be more relaxed now that you know more people are starting to get vaccinated as well? Maybe. Yeah. I, I mean, it, I, I think when everybody was, uh, when we went through all the holiday seasons, everybody was very focused on this and we were very focused on it and we still are, we're still dedicating, uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars to this every month. Um, and we want people to continue to utilize the testing. If we see demand go up, uh, we'll do it every day again at the on center. Um, but demand's gone down. A lot of it is because people aren't sick and people don't know people who are sick, right? That's what was driving this, is you have your people uh, who were sick going most of the time to the, to the F-Shed or in Essential Health or somewhere else. Or if you were a contact to someone sick, you wanted to know right away, you go to one of our sites, even though as a contact, Dr. Gupta will tell you you need a PCR test. Um, but we know that people... Uh, you know, people fudge the rules a little bit. So I don't view the drop off in demand as that, that bad. I think it's expected. Uh, once things start to get a little bit better in the community, people uh, are a little bit more comfortable um, when it comes to testing and there's less people getting it that you know. Uh, but people need to not get comfortable with the gatherings. And with when you have symptoms, you have to rule out COVID. That's the one. I think that's the big risk right now. Symptomatic spread helped get us on the upward trend in the fall. Then we had the holidays. Um, that's something that we all can control. If we have symptoms, we stay, we get a test. Uh, and when we don't have COVID, then we can go on with our lives. My last question, just re relating to like proving the underlying conditions, it sounds like people do have a lot of options as far as doctor's notes or um, prescriptions and other things that you said. Will you guys like release a, a full list so that people know like specifically mm -hmm. what they'll be allowed to show to verify their? Condition? Yeah, we'll we'll have we'll have a better program Thursday to answer all the specific questions related to the how. If we add it on to what documentation is eligible or not, um, again, this is fluid, right? We have a phone call yesterday with the state at four o'clock uh, talking about this, and here we are. Tuesday, three o'clock. I haven't even seen Dr. Gupta till right now. Um, so we'll, we'll figure it out. We'll figure out the best way to get to our most immunocompromised first. Um, people that uh, the, the primary care doctors are saying if they get this, they're not going to live. Uh, there'll be a very high risk of not living. Those are the people we'd like to get vaccinated first. Um, and we'll figure out the best way to do that. Um, but again, this is going to be a slog. It's going to be a process. Um, we're still going to, uh, seniors are still going to get vaccinated. Uh, Kinney's has 1,600 new appointments this week. Um, and, uh, you know, at some point there will be more supply coming in and the fairgrounds will have new appointments. We'll get a lot more vaccine. We'll get through it all. It's just 
uh, we have to be patient. We have to be patient. Ryan, do you have an updated number for the, the total uh, number of county residents who have been vaccinated? Let me look, Tim, I think we may. As of yesterday, 55,112. 11.9% of the county population. I did not break up what that is out of 360,000, which is essentially the adults. Um, so uh, another important thing related to the immunocompromised, uh, the, uh, your Pfizer vaccine allows 16 and 17 year olds. Uh, the Moderna does not. I don't know what we have. So at our pod, if we have Moderna, if you're 16 and 17, you will not be able to get a vaccine here. Um, you, the, uh, again, that's just the basic rules with what vaccine people have. But if you're 16 years old with a comorbidity, uh, you can get the Pfizer vaccine. I don't know what we'll have at our pod uh, related to that. We may get some Pfizer um, because hospitals did have Pfizer, uh, and, but we'll, we'll find out again later this week. That, that 55,000 is all first doses, right? That's not... Correct, first cool. doses. I just want to clarify, the, so the, the, you're, you're still trying to figure out as a group if you'll use doctor's offices to get to the people with health conditions. We're, we're going to use doctor's or. offices for intelligence 100%, whether to maybe have a pre-registration process. Whether the, what we need to work out logistically, and Dr. Gupta and I need to figure this out, is whether or not we have a pop-up clinic with doctors at a doctor's office or a centralized location there, whether we just have them here, whatnot, depends on what, how many doses we get. But what will happen is if whoever, again, if we do a pop-up clinic with doctors, they need to do it Thursday or Friday or else they're not getting any. It, this needs to go into arms. Um, this can't be a situation where uh, you're holding on to vaccine. We're the best in the business when it comes to getting it in arms in the whole state. We're gonna continue to be that way. registration while working with doctors there's not going to be like a specific uh condition that you have to have you're going to rely on the doctor's opinion and their medical advice. no you have to you still have to hit the the, the that, but I yeah mean, for, you said those who are going to yeah we want to work with the doctors to get they know their clients who are most at risk to the worst outcome we would love to be able to in our first tranche work with doctors, whether that means they're performing the shot or we're performing the shot, that's a strategy. Um, those need to be ironed out. Dr. Gupta has been having some conversations. Uh, she, she needs to tell, you know, tell us what she thinks the best way to do it. But again, it depends on supply. If we have a lot of supply, we can do, do lots of things. If we have a couple hundred doses, uh, logistically it limits your options uh, as to what makes sense. Other questions? None? Okay, we'll see you Thursday.